Welcome! Tumunda Makeover! We have traveled all over Zambia to find hard-working farmers. We want to share their success stories. And where there are challenges, we will bring experts to help them gain the extra knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields. And increase their income. We will see how farmers from across the country can benefit from our experts' advice. While also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they improve their farms. On Munda Makeover! Hello farmers, we're back. But before we start visiting new farms, we want to go back to the old farmers that we visited to see what happened in their farms and talk more about climate change. <coughs> Last week, we looked at the many benefits farmers get when they come together. Today, we want to look at financial literacy, how you manage your finances as a farmer during these climate change times. And this one affects every farmer as an individual and when you come together as a group. If you want to turn your farming into a profitable business, then you must have some financial education and practice it at your farm or in your farmer's group. Financial education includes keeping records, saving and many other things, but today we will focus on record keeping. Let's start off in Mapiwe's farm. Hold on Sipiwe Haninga from Better World Innovations to help Mapiwe get an understanding of record keeping and financial literacy. What is financial literacy? Okay, so basically for a farmer, financial mm. literacy is uh, the know-how of managing your finances as a farmer, your expenses, your income and your savings. Mama Piwe, how are you managing your finances, especially when it comes to your farm? I have a challenge in managing. Mm. Sometimes, mm. and the, expen the, the expenditure can be more, then you maybe you get into loss. The income is less. Is less, yes. Ah, okay. Do you keep any records uh, to see how and where you've missed it all? No, I just put my records in my head. Mm. <laughs> So Spillway, you have to tell us what are the activities that we need to conduct when it comes to financial literacy as uh, pertaining to farming. Farming is a business. Mm. So if you're doing farming uh, as a business, you need to keep records as a farmer for you to know uh, if you're doing well or you, or you have to uh, improve in certain areas. Mm. So for you to keep records in your head, uh, I don't know if you, you've, you've managed to keep all the records for all the farming seasons. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so keeping record is very important as mm. a farmer because it, it helps you uh, regulate what you should do and what you should not do in the coming season and also helps you in proper preparation. So let's take an example. If Mapiwe keeps cows, chickens, tomatoes, and maize in her farm, she should keep records for all of them. In our book, there's in and out. Anything that you sell and brings money goes to in, which is the income. Anything that you buy for the project, like cow feeds or pesticides for the tomatoes, goes to the out section, which is expenses. At the end of the project, take all the income and subtract all the expenses to get your profit. At the end of the season, she will then see which one gave her the most profit and which one gave less. So, in this example, we can see tomatoes gave less profit than the others. This will then help her to decide if there are other ways that can raise the profit of tomatoes in the next season, like choosing a variety that doesn't require too much rain. Or, she can decide to drop the tomato project and concentrate more on the others. Or instead of tomatoes, she can even try out onions. But she can only make this decision if she has been keeping records. So you see, records help us as farmers to make important decisions in our farming. And this helps to make more profits. How do you go about starting this whole uh, financial management process when it comes to her farm? What's the first thing that she needs to do? 
Okay, so uh, to start with, she has to identify how much land she's going to be using for her farming season. Okay. Yes, by, uh, by knowing how much land you are going to use, mm. it will also give you at least an estimated amount of money that you need to invest on that piece of land. If the most important uh, farm inputs that you need, you list them down and just list how much that would cost you. In so let's go step by step. The land, the land, size of the land, the size the of the land. The second one is? Uh, the cost of production for okay. that particular uh, crop that she wants to do that season. And yeah. cost of production would include what? So cost of, of production would include seed, equipment and mm. labor. Okay. Yes. All those things she has to write down in her records book. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. So once that is done, mm -hmm. then now you are good to go. Financial planning allows you, the farmer, to be able to invest your money according to your needs. This allows you to project on the activities that you will be carrying out in the upcoming farming season and also helps you have a true record of your profit and loss. So don't keep it in your head. Write it down. A record book will help keep track of the money you spend on your munda and how you spend it. On the left side here, write down all the income you get. On the right side, fill in your expenses. Add up the total money made and money spent. At the end of the season, subtract expenses from income. This will show you your profit or loss. Wow, Sipiwe, I think you've given us so much helpful information. Isn't that right? Exactly. I have to budget first mm. before I do something. So you are ready to get your budget on, keeping your records for each and everything that you do on the farm? I'm very much ready. And that's what it is about financial literacy. It's going to make your planning, your saving, and everything about your agribusiness true. <coughs> Let's now move to Easton and meet farmer Standwell, who is also struggling to keep records. Records are the first step to good planning. Decisions that can end up with a farmer making a profit or a loss. So I've asked Mr. Dhaka from the Ministry of Agriculture to tell us all about it. What is it that you are doing here? I'm counting my plants so that I should take them to the market. Oh, okay, so you sell some seedlings as well. Uh, yeah. How many seedlings do you have in total? About 3,000. Wow, 3,000. 3, and uh, you remember this off the top of your head? Yes. yes okay, yes. do you record somewhere where you keep all of these numbers? No, I don't record, but I just keep them in my mind. Mm, brilliant memory, I see. But there's so much on your farm. There's so many things I've seen. Yes. You've got livestock yes. and you've got crops as well. How are you keeping record of, you know, the different treatments that you're giving your animals? Mm. I just remember in my heart, mm. <laughs> then, yeah, you gave the vaccine. <laughs> I need a memory as good as yours, yes, Mr. Chira, yes, because it's, yes. it's really working very mm. hard. Mr. Daka, yeah. what do you think? Do you think this is a, an effective way to manage and uh, keep track of things on the farm? If you just remember by mind, you think everything is fine. Mm. But the moment you keep records, you're able to tr keep track to know uh, how you are moving as a business. Exactly. Yes. Are you going forward? Are you stagnant? Or are you going backwards? Yes. Uh -huh. Of course, you have said you are able to remember. Yeah. But I doubt if you are able to remember what you did 10 years ago, Mr. Chiro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a difficult yeah, one. That's, that's, that's the a thing. That's the thing. Yeah. 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 So it's very important that you put things eh, in mm -hmm. return. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. uh, for example, we are talking about uh, Maybe the beehives. Yes. Yes. How many kgs of the, honey the, the kgs. is it able to produce? Yes. It's according to the season. Okay. 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 Maybe 18 to 20. Okay. Mm. The other season, you might see that it's 20 to 25. Ah. Yes. In some seasons, you have 17, others 25. Yes. Meaning there's a very big variance there. Mm -hmm. So you need to know what, what happens when you have 18 kgs. Mm -hmm. What happens during that season? Mm. Is it a season where you have delayed rains or what, what happens? Then the, the other thing, Mr. Chirwa, um, climate change. Yes. You are aware of the term climate change? Yes. In the past years, mm. rains could come up in the, year, in the month of October. Mm -hmm. But looking at this time now, you find that rains starts in December. Okay. Mm. Meaning that there is that climate change. Okay. Things okay. are changing. Good. As you plan to grow your crops or to keep your bees and everything else, yes. you have to look at the change of the in, climate. In climate. You yes. have a reduced 
period of rain. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, so now, in that case, there's very, it's very important for you to keep a record of when the effective rains started. Mm. Like for this year, this season, when was the first day you got the effective rains? That was on 18th. 18th of December. December. Uh, yes. Yeah. So then when was the last day of effective rains, if you can remember? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you see? <laughs> yeah, we got you there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it, that's very important information to remember. Yes. You have to calculate how many days was that. Okay. Uh, uh, then you compare the next season or the previous season, you okay. see how many days also. Because you have already told us that you planted the 40 kgs this right, season, exactly. you planted 50 kgs last, last season. season, this season you got 11, last season you got 9. Yes. But you are not looking at how much rain yes. was in that That's period. Yeah, you yeah, see? Yeah, yeah. We can blame the seed, meanwhile it was the season. You right. see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important to have those records. I see. Yes. Absolutely. Making sense? Let's break it down. So Standwell needs to keep records of all the farming activities in his farm. And with the challenges of climate change, he also needs to keep a record of the rainfall patterns during the season. Did it affect the plants, the livestock, or was it okay? So, if he gets a low harvest and the rainfall was good, then he will know clearly that he needs to improve on the other areas, like for example, choosing the right fertilizer or drought-resistant seed for his crop. And if the rainfall was very poor, then he can improve on his land preparations to conserve more water in the soil. And with this information, he can then be ready for the new season. Mr. Chira, how are you feeling about what our expert has come to tell us here? Have you found it very valuable? Very, very much. Yes? Good. Indeed? Happy? Good. Very, okay. very much happy. I will even start recording what I'm doing. Excellent. Absolutely Excellent. fantastic. <laughs> I think that was the whole point of yeah. the exchange. So I'm happy to hear that Good. you've got so much information that you feel comfortable enough to start keeping records. Yes. 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 So next yes. time uh, I visit the farm, I expect to find a big yeah. book, yeah. Yeah. a very big book, yes. <laughs> all of the records. Yes. Yeah, fantastic. Good. It seems like Standwell is headed for a major change at his farm, keeping records. Before we move to the next farm, let's first look at the weather. Welcome to the Munda Makeover Farming News for Zambia. Today, we are going to have a look at Zambia's rainfall seasonal forecast for December 2023 to March 2024. We expect varying rainfall patterns across the country. When making such forecast, experts look at how much rain we have been getting in the past years. They then predict if the coming season will be normal, above normal, or below normal in a given area. Let's dive into the details. As shown on the map, the start of rains is anticipated in November for most regions, except for the southern areas where it is expected to start by the end of December and northwestern areas expected to start in October. During October to December, Luapula, Northern, Muchinga, Lusaka, Central, and Copper Belt provinces, including Lundazi, Chama, Kaoma, Kabompo, and Kalabo districts, can expect normal to below normal rainfall. However, Southern, Western, most of northwestern and eastern provinces, including Mansa and Mpika districts, expect normal to above normal rainfall. Moving into January 2024, the eastern half of Zambia, including Kabompo district in northwestern province, is likely to experience normal to below normal rainfall. Meanwhile, southern, western, northwestern, and the northern parts of Luapula and Muchinga provinces including Mumba district, are expected to receive normal to above normal rainfall. For December to February 2024, Copper Belt, Central and Lusaka provinces, spanning across Joma, Petauke, Nimba, Mbala, Zambezi, Kabompo, Chembe, Milenge, to Mansa districts, are projected to have normal to below normal rainfall. Eastern, Muchinga, Northern, Lopula, Southern, Western, and Northwestern provinces, however, can anticipate normal to above normal rainfall during this period. In the final stretch of the season, spanning January to March, most parts of Zambia are likely to experience normal to above normal rainfall, except for Ikelenge, Mwinilunga, Mpika, Kasama, Livingston, 
Mazapuka, Monze, Kafiwe, and Siavonga districts, which will get normal to below normal rainfall. Tips for farmers. If you are in areas that expect less rain, use an ox drone ripper or make basins using a hand hoe to prepare your fields. Also, plant cowpeas alongside maize to provide cover for the soil and after harvest, leave the crop residues on the farm as mulch. This way, you will conserve water in the soil. Plant drought tolerant seeds and early maturing crop varieties like sorghum, cowpea, or beans. Additionally, try to plant more than one crop. For example, you could have maize with an oil crop like soybeans or sunflower. This way, you will sell oil crops for income as well. Finally, plan to provide small livestock like goats or pigs with water at home in a bucket if communal water points are far away. On the other hand, if you are in areas that expect rain, make sure to collect rainwater from your corrugated iron sheet roof by directing it into a tank and you will have water to use when the rains are over. Scout your farm for pests and diseases, especially the four armyworm in maize, and as soon as you spot them, contact your local agricultural officer for advice on the right pesticide to use. Spray your livestock against ticks, which increase during the rainy season. Also, rotate the crowd to prevent it from getting muddy, ensuring your livestock's hooves stay dry and prevent foot rot disease. See you next week on the Munda Makeover Weather News. Now, there's also another important use for keeping records, especially when it comes to pests and diseases for both our livestock and crops. Let's join our farmer Morton as he learns more. The time, effort and money you put into your farming needs to be examined. How you do this and why is important to your success. I sit down with Morton to have an honest discussion about his farm record keeping practices. It's definitely a lot of activity that you have going on here. Yeah. That makes me very curious. Uh, Do you keep records? I don't. And uh, what about receipts for your purchases? Do you keep any receipts? Uh, I don't keep, let me say I don't keep, keep any receipts. Right. Yes. Okay, maybe we can now have a discussion about why it's important for us to have our books and keep a record of our receipts. Yes. Okay, so we'll start with your livestock or your cows, right? So I'm sure that you know you have different varieties of cows which need different maintenance for your uh, diseases management and for your pest management as well, yes. right? So when it comes to vaccinations, can you tell me the last vaccination that you used maybe five years ago? No, I'm not able to tell you. <laughs> what about two years ago? I can't just remember. Right. Yes. Animals develop resistance to certain drugs and vaccines okay. if you use them repetitively without changing them over time. So if you want to maintain a good and healthy cow, yeah. you have to be able to keep a record of what animal medicines that you use, advised by your vet, of course, so that we don't have resistance in our animals. When it comes to our crops, record keeping is also just as relevant as livestock farming because we have to keep a track of what seed we planted, when we planted it, what implements and chemicals we're going to use from the time of planting all the way to the time of harvesting. It helps you determine whether or not the seed you're working with and the crops you're working with are profitable enough to keep on farming. Making sense? Let's break it down. So by keeping proper records, Morton would know the whole history of his livestock or crops. For example, what type of dewormers were last used on the cows or the type of pesticides he used to spray his tomatoes? When you use the same type of drug in animals or crops every time, then the pests or diseases get used to that particular mixture of that drug and they don't get affected by it. This means that the drug stops working. So by keeping good records, he'll be able to know what drug he used before and what he can now use that has a different mixture that the pests are not used to. This will ensure his cows or crops remain healthy over time. 
If there's also a record of a disease that has led to death of his animals, then Morton will also take extra caution with his livestock and make sure they are properly vaccinated. Now that I've uh, gotten something out of it, exactly. and it is very important, it shows me that I have to keep my records. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. yes. With the, the information that I got from you, I'm going to become a better farmer because the something that I've learned out of it, it is going to change my, my way of doing farming. It is going to change my way of living. That was a good lesson on record keeping and we have seen how important it is to practice it in our farming. Goodbye for now and see you next week on another show of Munda Makeover.